Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Vonderhaar from Intelligent Research. On today's episode, we're joined by Lexmark Laureate, Brant Nystrom. Welcome, Brant. Thanks, Steve. Nice to be here. Thank you very much. Now, first thing you got to tell me is what in the heck is a Lexmark Laureate? And I, am I in the presence of tech royalty here or what's, uh, what's the deal with that? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, I, I, I get asked that a lot. Uh, what is a Laureate? Uh, it, really what it is, it's an inherited term from our days. Uh, as an as IBM's printer division, uh, which is really how Lexmark started. And uh, it was a term from IBM. I believe they still use it to this day. Uh, and, and it's just kind of hung on as a legacy title uh, that we've kept through the decades. And uh, really, it's just a term that's really most synonymous today uh, with the R&D fellow position. So, uh, I, you know, what I usually tell people is it really just means I'm an old engineer. You've been around the block once or twice. Yeah, I've been around a while. Yeah, so uh, uh, now uh, people might be asking me, Steve, why are you having Lexmark, a printer company, on Intelligent Video today? But uh, uh, really, we're seeing some activity from you folks out of your optical line that really is building on some of the legacies of Lexmark. Uh, tell us about uh, uh, how you guys got going and the whole notion of beginning to uh, do a video processing on the edge. Yeah, so... Uh... Yeah, I apologize. This might be a long story. So, uh, uh, not so you know, not so long ago, uh, digital printing, you may recall, was considered a really high tech industry. Uh, you know, through its growth years, probably like in the in the '90s and the 2000s, uh, we, we had really fierce competition uh, with companies like HP, Xerox, Canon, Epson, many others. Uh, and you know, and to win in those days uh, was to be highly vertically integrated. And uh, you know, we had to we had to develop deep. Uh, and growing patent portfolios to maintain sort of a detente between the manufacturers throughout those super competitive years. Uh, as such, uh, we evolved to build all of our own technologies, uh, including electrical, mechanical, marking technologies, imaging, manufacturing, chemical engineering, and, and, and many, many others. Uh, you know, the, that technology stack uh, resulted in uh, the printing devices of today, uh, which are really complicated electromechanical devices uh, with advanced connectivity, you know, onboard sensors, uh, remote management, and, and, and many other features. Uh, you know, if we if we shift over uh, to kind of what we're doing now uh, at Lexmark, uh, as we you know as we sourced our technology portfolio uh, and 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 the you know the business landscape, uh, we're really looking for viable products uh, and product ideas that we can pull out of all of that old school technology element that came from the printing business. Uh, obviously the printing business is still, still strong and kicking for us. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're really working towards uh, extracting capable components and pieces and parts from that printing business, uh, of which we have many, right? And that, that's mostly coming from uh, sort of that technology stack, stack piece. And uh, when you think about kind of where we ended up today, uh, we took things like, connectivity, uh, remote device management, electronic design and integration, uh, and, 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 and many of those pieces and components from the devices that are out there in the world, uh, pull them together into our Optra Edge solution, uh, which is sort of how, how we've, we've made tracks today. And you know, for us internal, uh, there's, there's really close, tight-knit uh, alignment between sort of the features and functions on our edge computing side and the features and functions that, that come out of print. And we've been able to, to lever a lot of the pieces and parts. Uh, one of the biggest levers really is the security piece of today, right? Which is a really critical component. Uh, you know, most people aren't too concerned about the security uh, of their of their print infrastructure. They've had it in place for a long time. And uh, we lever that uh, for our, our edge processing devices. So essentially you've learned through history that printers have become pretty complicated, uh, sophisticated devices on the edge. And it's just a matter of saying, how can we leverage uh, that that complexity, those capabilities of edge computing and apply them in new areas. And one of those new areas that you're looking at is the Optra product line. Tell us a little bit about Optra, where it came from and what it uh, aspires to do. Yeah, so, you know, when you think about printing, as you said, a printer is really a device, a processing device at the edge that's full of sensors. And uh, Optra Edge is, is not too far off. Uh, what we are uh, is an end-to-end -end edge computing platform that really uh, we created to bring the promise of AI to business operations. So we ran, uh, uh, we're a combination of an integrated hardware and software solution for rapidly creating and deploying 
remote applications at scale. Uh, we try really hard to enable uh, our customers to turn uh, the things that they can see and hear, you know, through 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 video cameras and, and audio microphones, uh, the things they see and hear each and every day into streaming data and business insights. Uh, Opter Edge is a is a user friendly, user focused platform uh, where we try to combine uh, edge compute uh, hardware and peripherals, and peripherals being things like cameras, microphones, other types of sensors, uh, with a low code, no code cloud based management portal. Uh, to drive applications like artificial intelligence, machine learning skills, skills, what name that we give to our applications, skills, uh, to the point of business need. Uh, we, we, we work hard to strive to be a full one-stop shop, end-to-end -end solution uh, that's quick, uh, easy, secure, and professional. So, uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, so uh, how do you go about injecting smartness into the edge of the network? What, what specifically are you doing with Opter to make those devices uh, really fine-tuned to handle uh, complex video projects at the edge. Yeah, so so we really inject intelligence kind of at the edge in a number of ways. Uh, it begins with our edge computing hardware. Uh, we have a line of homegrown, purpose-built uh, edge compute devices. Uh, we currently have four of those available today. Uh, at the low end, we have devices really suitable for running simple applications, lightweight AI applications, and device gateway connectivity. Uh, those devices are 100% Lexmark design and technology, offer secure boot, uh, run an embedded Linux operating system, uh, and they are available either in a, in a rack mount or a uh, console type configuration. Uh, they're powered by quad core ARM processor and uh, really suit the needs of sort of entry level activities on, in, on the edge uh, through, our, through our system. Uh, at the high end, we, have, we take great advantage of our ongoing relationship with NVIDIA. Uh, you know, clearly, uh, you know, the world's leader in GPU processors and, and currently, you know, the Wall Street darling in the space of AI. And uh, those devices are the RVZ-1000 and RVZ-5000, which really, uh, it's our electronics and connectivity piece, but we couple that uh, with the NVIDIA uh, GPU processors to give us that extra boost of artificial intelligence and to really take the capabilities of our system uh, well over the edge of where we could have been otherwise. Now, a lot of times when we talk about N N NVIDIA, we think about uh, huge data centers that have massive processing power, but you're talking about putting some of this processing capability uh, on site uh, where the video is actually being captured. Uh, why does it right. have applications in video and why is it maybe better to do video applications on the edge uh, than in a cloud data center? Yeah, so so video processing on the edge is 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 really interesting, right? So uh, traditionally, that's been done in the cloud, as you mentioned. Uh, cloud is great for uh, uh, easy access, uh, easy to to deploy your solution. To everyone, you just just log into the web, and and there it is. Um, there there are a number of tools that make it very simple to develop there, uh, but there are some issues there, and uh, the issues are these. Um, when, when you're on the edge, you, you really have to um, take advantage of really what the capabilities of having a computer on site give you. And uh, those are a few. So let, let me go down, go down a list with you. Um, one, uh, low latency. Uh, one of the most important ones is you, know, you get, get quick turnaround. Uh, you can think about this uh, if you have a car that has uh, auto automatic controls, right? And or autonomous driving. Uh, you're driving down the street. Uh, you know, branches in the road. If you had to send that data, uh, that video data up to the cloud to be processed, send it back down to the car, uh, you, you'd have long run over the branch before it has a chance to react, right? Uh, with an edge device that's right there and the processing happens right there on the spot, it's instantaneous. And, and, and of course, then you can react uh, quickly. So situations where you need low latency, edge is a necessity. Uh, next one would be uh, bandwidth. So in particular, on these video applications that we talk about with artificial intelligence, there's a ton of video data that passes through these. We have some solutions that are you know, upwards of 50 terabytes of data a week that we're collecting uh, on, on the video side. And uh, when, when you're on the cloud, it's just, it, it's cost prohibitive, it is time prohibitive to, to do all of that processing there. Uh, additionally, you don't, want to, you don't want to be collecting and storing all this video, right? right? People, people have access to that, you, you, can, you can get at it. So in our case, 
the video comes in, we process, we extract the thing we're looking for. Maybe it's just counting the number of people in a particular area. We extract the number four people, we send off the four and the video goes away. So it really reduces the amount of bandwidth that it takes to send the data around. And then of course, that's totally related to the, the cost associated with that as well. Yeah. Uh, one, one, one for you too. Um, you know, personally identifiable information, right? That's that's critical these days, right? We, as we talk about security. Uh, and, and when you process on the edge, as I said, you're only extracting the information you need from that video. And again, it's not stored. So any likenesses of people aren't there. They're nowhere to be to be to be taken or, or, or cybercrime to go ahead and, and, and attack that space. Uh, again, the video is discarded. We just keep the number and we pass it on for, for, for the process. So uh, edge, edge certainly has places that it's good. But you know what? The cloud's good, too. And the real answer is. Is, is finding the right balance for your business need and your use case applications. And it really is about uh, matching the, the technology to the need itself. And so often we attach the notion of big tech or big companies uh, to the implementation of AI. But when you start talking about edge computing and handling video uh, in this manner, that really opens the door to some new types of applications for video for small companies as well. Could you talk about some of the use cases maybe that you're, you folks are envisioning for Optra? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we do we do all types of interesting applications for folks. Um, and, and as you mentioned, you know, from from large companies down to small, uh, you know, a lot, there's a lot of folks sort of in the small company space that uh, sell applications themselves. And uh, many of those applications are homegrown and, and have been within their business for many, many years. Uh, but it's it's hard to deploy those. It's uh, we, we have a particular customer that is in uh, retail space and uh, they were deploying tablets right in, in in the ceiling in order to, to deliver their application to that retail location of course eventually that doesn't that doesn't cut the cut the mustard with uh you know with, with it security and, and 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 all of that so they needed a professional device in place to help deploy their application and uh, we were able to provide that with our solution uh in addition to people being able to deploy their own applications on our devices uh we have custom built solutions that are that, that are that are very simplistic uh, that, that don't cost a lot of money, uh, that now allow people to do uh, simple applications of AI to their business and take advantage of really this AI wave that maybe they wouldn't be able to do if they had to, to depend on it all themselves and hire a whole team of AI developers to make that happen. Yeah, what are some of the, what is just one of those use cases, that, one of those simple use cases? I think I was talking with one of your colleagues mm -hmm. who talking about uh, oil change places, uh, maybe using yeah. uh, AI. How, does, how would they put AI to work? Yeah, that's right. Uh, these small businesses that do uh, car service uh, in, in, in one of these instances that we're working with, they track cars as they come onto site, uh, identify how much time uh, that vehicle spends on the site, uh, how much time they spend waiting in line to be serviced, uh, if they've been uh, greeted or not uh, by one of the service technicians, and uh, ultimately tracking all the time and, and, and all of the care that they receive throughout their process on that site. Uh, which then becomes uh, really the whole set of KPIs that they use to drive their entire business. Really, so video helps the manager of that uh, oil change shop uh, make sure that they're getting customers addressed in a timely and courteous fashion, I guess. That's exactly right. So do you see uh, Optra as a platform that can be used by uh, uh, software developers other than, mm -hmm. than Lexmark? Do you see yourself as a platform for, for applications developed by outside vendors? That's a really good question. Um, answer is simply yes. Uh, while we have a full AI development team in house and very happy to deploy those for, for, for applications that require kind of that heavyweight AI implementation, uh, again, uh, we are architected and built for folks to build their own applications. And we provide some tools within our infrastructure to help enable that to happen, make it quick, make it easy, and allow you to kind of control your own artificial intelligence destiny. Uh, in addition to, to you being able to do that, as I mentioned before, if you have an application that you need to deploy, you can do it on our, on our ecosystem. We're very happy to host that, and that allows you a very easy way to have sort of drop-in IT capabilities. Uh, so, so, so it's easy to deploy, and you don't have to deal with uh, you know, IT departments and, and, and loading up applications on servers and such, which, which takes quite a bit of time. So uh, look into your crystal ball a little bit for me. Uh, we always like talking about the future of uh, 
uh, AI in enabling video applications. Uh, how does uh, remote processing power change the way that uh, we, we might be using uh, uh, video and, and AI infused applications, uh, particularly in, on a remote landscape over time? Yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's amazing uh, what this stuff does. First off, you know, as with all kind of computer processing, it, you know, the processing power is expanding really quickly. And, uh, and then again, it also resonates very well with people, this visual AI, because again, so much of our, 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 our personal processing of information happens through our eyes and the things that we see. Uh, it's a direct corollary to what AI sees and can capture in its environment. So I, I'm going to tell you, you know, it starts out today with uh, some folks that are visionary in terms of their business. Hey, could we use AI to solve a problem for us? And, and th that's where we are today. Um, but ultimately, as I see it, businesses are going to see their competitors and other businesses in their field and what they're able to do with artificial intelligence. And I'm going to guess that, you know, in, in, in really simple five years time, uh, just about every business is going to find a way that they can extract information from their operating environment, pull that data out, you know, get the only the pieces and parts that they need. And it requires no people at this point in time to make that happen. Right. So they, they quickly get at exactly what they're looking for, that they can then use that data uh, to act uh, to change the way that they operate, to be more efficient. Efficient operations is a place where we spend a lot of time. Uh, and then, of course, to take that data and push it on to other systems that they can do further processing down the road. Uh, it'll be fun to watch uh, the whole market evolve uh, and uh, keep apprised uh, of uh, Lexmark's uh, progress uh, in this uh, segment as well. Uh, Brent Nystrom from Lexmark, thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Uh, you're very welcome, Steve. I appreciate being here and thanks for having me. And our thanks goes out to all of you joining us for today's episode. Be sure to join us for future editions of Intelligent Video Today, where we will be talking with more thought leaders like Brant Nystrom to learn more about the intelligent video landscape. For Intelligent Research, I'm Steve Onderhaar. Thanks for your time.